I'm showing this uh, Aria. I'm not warmed up as usual. Uh, I'm showing this Aria PE-175. This is not the same as some, as some of the other Aria jazz guitars that may look similar. This one's made in Japan. It's a Herb Ellis model. Uh, PE-175. Quality is through the roof. This is an amazing guitar. It does need, it does, well, it doesn't really need it, but it's got, you know, those, some of those little cracks in the binding that really, you know, you know, I've sold guitars for 8,000 that have that, you know, old binding just has those little thin cracks in it. Most of it doesn't even bother me at all. I wouldn't even worry about it if I was going to buy this guitar. There's one little place here where there's about an inch, inch and a half where the piece is coming out a little bit. I might get that fixed, but the rest of it, I could care less. That's just, you know, it's, it's, it's just as common as like cracking on an old vintage Martin with nitrocellulose finish. But, uh... Now, it's funny because I'm not real into flat wounds. I, you know, if you keep an open mind, you always learn something about guitars. <clears throat> and these flat ones have been on for years. Now, I just, I went through some of my old, you know, random strings that I have in a box. I found uh, a, a flat one of a low E. And I said on my last video that this will even have more tone with with a newer string, even if it's a flat one, even though flat ones tend to be a little dull to my ear. So, but I put this string on and sure enough, this, this low E has so much more tone. You can even hear it... Uh, you know, unplugged. Uh, this guitar even has a nice sound unplugged. I know it's probably hard for this to pick up on on, uh, on my little Q3 here. Kind of reverb it. But I just want to make the point, you know, that this, this guitar is any made in Japan guitar, uh, especially by a, by a strong company like Aria or Ibanez, you know, they're, they're kind of in the same genre, very high quality guitars. Um, but any guitar made in the 70s or 80s, you know, made in Japan is a very, very special guitar. And they're all a little bit different. But this guitar just had one of my friends played it, who's a great, great guitar player, by the way. And he just noticed the presence immediately. He's just like, man, this guitar really has a presence, which it does. You can hear it like, it's a musical. That's, it's so hard to explain. guitar has that kind of high-end vintage L5 kind of sound. I really love this guitar. I think I put it at 1149 If you do a wire transfer uh, to help me save money on processing, I'll do $899 plus $60 shipping, and that's with, with the case with the purple lining, which I do believe is, is an original case, um, like I said. Uh, but yeah, this, this guitar is really, really musical. I'm using a solid state amp, by the way. Pickups are strong. This treble pickup. Really has a nice sound. Here's both pickups. Yeah, these are really cool. Reminds me a lot 
uh, some of the presence and the musicality of this guitar reminds me a lot of an old Gibson, like early 70s L5. It's just got a... It's just got a musicality, which is so hard to explain, that the notes just kind of swell. And it's very strong in the mids and the mid bass. And it's the mids and the mid bass where a lot of the magic happens with an arch top guy. So I hope this guitar speaks to somebody and they're just like, man, you know, it's got to be mine because it, it's a really special guitar. I'm really going to miss it. And that's not bullshit. I really love stuff like this. I mean, I hardly have any volume on my amp, too. It just sounds. sweet box um, like I said wire transfer $8.99 plus you know 50 shipping I'm a great packer even if you've never bought a guitar through the mail it's it's I'm really really take a lot of pride in my in my shipping and packing I, I spent the money to get new boxes for 11 bucks a piece because I don't buy huge quantities of them Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if you can hear that, you know, unplugged, that, that kind of cool reverb -y. But um, actually, uh, and these are with flat wounds, like I said, and I replaced, I replaced one of the flat wounds, and boy, the difference is night and day. I think these flat wounds have been on here for at least five years. So I, I happened, it's funny, because usually when I have flat wounds, I'll try to find a regular round wound to replace a string with. But I happened to find a Thomas, what is it, Instafeld or something like that, uh, and a low E, and, and it just, it has a lot more ring to it than the other strings. So yeah, these strings are ancient, but this, this guitar sounds great right now. On my last video, I said I might replace it with uh, round wounds. I'm starting to question my own thought on that because it's just, I'm starting to really love the sound of it right now with these flats. And I always know a great guitar when I like the sound on the treble pickup. This, this this front pickup uh, that's like L5 ish man on a jazz box I think this has like 12s or 13s I'm not sure but I'm starting to kind of get used to it but it just sounds really good like I said I love it that treble pickup sounds beautiful and both pickups together Like I said, the action is pretty, actually pretty darn low right now, even with these thick strings, you know. Um, so I, I think I'd stick with maybe 12s on this guitar, you know. But anyway, I love this guitar, I really do. But yeah, this is in a whole different category than like some of the other guitars that may look similar to this but aren't made in Japan. This is, I think it's a PE-175, made in Japan in the 80s. The Japanese know a lot about making guitars. They really, uh, here, here's a little piece here about an inch, inch and a half on the binding. You might want to, you know, have that thick, so that would be relatively cheap. Like I said, the rest of the binding, it's got those little thin cracks, which is very, very, very common in older guitars. It doesn't bother me at all. I wouldn't even worry about it. 
But yeah, this, this guitar just has a lot of mojo. It has a lot of presence. It has a lot of sound. It's got that age sound from the old wood, and I think they use thicker layers of, of wood on this because uh, it's just got that depth. Kind of got that... That kind of Kenny Burrell, Herb Ellis kind of tone. You know, Joe Pass would love this guitar. I actually, I actually studied with Joe Pass for a while. It's got a little ding in the back of the neck here behind the third fret. Nothing real major. Um, a couple little really small, you know, ding. Uh, it looks pretty damn clean though overall. This is, but like I said, and I'm not trying to be a salesman, I'd, I'd really rather keep this. <laughs> if I was rich, which I'm working on by the way, I, I would keep this. It just has a sound. style like with the diminished arpeggio little augmented splash and uh, seems to sound really good down here but anyway this guitar is a sweetie I'm starting to get used to it because you have to push uh, a little harder not because of the action being high the action is actually pretty low because the strings are pretty thick but anyway, here, like I said, here's this one ding. I don't even know if you can see that. It's right there. And I don't have a lot of lighting right now. It's got one one ding right here. It's not too bad. Um, but yeah, this is really a lot of guitar. It's just got a musicality to it. I mean, you can go play a brand new Gibson 175. It's not even going to be close to this much depth. That, you know, it gets, it gets a, a refinement, and it's very difficult to explain tone. But when you have old wood... When you have old wood that's you know, um, you know, over thirty years old, and the Japanese <clears throat> really know how to cure wood. There's been a lot of really interesting stories about the way they cure wood. Uh, they store some wood in the deep in the ocean. There's a lot of stuff, and, and most people have no idea about it. But bottom line, the Japanese know a lot of secrets about making guitars. But you can just hear, and I'm, I'm playing an old PV solid state amp. I paid a couple hundred bucks for. It. beautiful guitar I'm really gonna miss it. it it really plays pretty damn good right now and like I said I just replaced the top low E with it with a newer fresher uh, you know uh, flat wound string it's probably been sitting in my box for you know a year and a half but but at the same time you know it, it was in the, the little sleeve the little paper sleeve and and even just changing one string this guitar is taking on a little more a little more depth and a little more uh, tone like the, the bass string has more uh, mid-range to it. Yeah, this is really a lot of guitar. Nice thing about a guitar like this, it's collectible too. I feel it's going to go up in value because, uh, you know, like the Ibanez, I used to be an Ibanez collector and I sold my collection because, because the values were really going up. And I, I think this, this one's a little bit of a sleeper. I mean, you know, any older guitar made in Japan in the 70s and 80s is really special. Of course, some are more special than others, but this is a lot of guitar. And if you do a wire transfer, eight ninety nine plus shipping, that's a great price for this guitar. I think one of the one of the points I want to make too, even with an electric plugged in tone, is that there's an acoustic quality to it. There's a musicality. There's a presence. There's a a, a bloom, kind of a bandwidth of, of magic in the mid and the mid bass. And it's that mids and mid bass in a great jazz guitar that really make it special. But yeah, this has that kind of Kenny Burrell, Kenny Burrell sound. I love this guitar. Yeah, this is a lot of guitar. It kind of reminds me of a guitar somebody like George Benson would love. Again, the treble pickup. Sounds just beautiful. Anyway, I could play this all day. 
but I'm going to go to the gym. Anyway, really nice guitar, like I said, uh, has a lot of those real thin little cracks around the binding. Um, but it's like, you know, it's I wouldn't do shit to this guitar. Like I said, I might have this little inch and a half section here replaced, and I, pro I probably wouldn't do any, even do that because it plays great, it sounds unreal, you know. That's just a diminished arpeggio coming down uh, the half step whole step scale, but I chromaticize it on the second string uh, and the third, and I add a little augmented splash. I guess I don't even get to the third string at that point, huh? Get to that. That little augmented splash is real nice. You, you can just get that kind of thing like that. Anyway, this, like I said, I, I'm at not, I'm eleven forty nine on this. It's a good value at that. But if you pay by wire transfer, I'll go eight ninety nine plus fifty shipping, unless you live in Hawaii or Alaska. Like I said, there's one little ding right here. But um, yeah, this is really, really a nice guitar. I'm not just saying that. I really, really know guitars, folks. I've been doing this kind of stuff and playing since I was seven, eight years old. I've been buying and selling since I, and collecting since I was about 18, and I'm 66 now. So. This, is, this is making the wall shake behind my amp, and I just have very low volume. sounding guitar it's just got that high-end refined jazz tone that has the depth to it that you just can't find in a newer guitar nothing beats old you know 30 year old or more aged wood it just takes on a, a musical quality it just it blooms it projects it seasons the sound it refines the sound it kind of very hard to explain it kind of, like it gives a, a beautiful tone but there's there's a certain kind of refined softness to the presentation. It's almost like a like a rare, you know, violin worth millions of dollars where it's still got all the tone, but there's just a an extra depth in there. There's an extra presence uh, to the tone. All right, Aria, Herb Ellis model, PE-175. Of course, the pickups, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the gold has came off, and and there's corrosion on the tailpiece. You know, stuff that I actually love. I think, I mean, I can't stand it when companies relic a guitar. They sit there with a screwdriver and start banging it and chipping it and stuff. That's bullshit in my mind. That's just absolute marketing bullshit. But when a guitar has aged naturally like this, I think it's really, really, really cool. It's even got the tailpiece like an L5 with a little piece under there that pushes on the top a little bit. It's got the kind of that kind of L5, you know, tailpiece, and uh, yeah, this this is a lot of guitar. This is a lot of guitar. All right, folks, take care. If you want to hit me up on this guitar. You know, if you want a great jazz guitar and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars, but you want something with some vintage depth and some vintage soul, something that has, has aged and seasoned and, and you know, that the sound has uh, developed through time and through the wood aging through time. You just can't beat that. You can't manufacture it. You know, I think the ones that get the closest to that is the Laura Arch Tops, which I sell because they spend so much time violin voicing the tops, you know, and they, and they really come into their own pretty damn quick. They sound damn good right out of the box, but you know, even just play them for you know five hours, they start to open up, and uh, and just keep opening and opening up, and after about twenty hours, they just sound unfucking believable, you know. I've got quite a few lower arch tops for sale. I've even got a seven hundred right now. I can do a great price on. Anyway, I got to get to some other stuff. Take care, folks. Let's all keep the positive faith. I'm I'm not into formal religion. <clears throat> I'm into laws of the universe and. Uh, you know, just believing and being positive and uh, understanding that the universe is designed to help us. We still have to do our part, but being positive and believing in what you have not seen is very powerful. 
Faith is about believing in what you have not seen, and the result of that faith is seeing what you believe. All right, ciao.